Well, we're gonna be reacting to Elden Ring's most used mechanics are a trap. This man had a statement where rolling is the worst mechanic or like the worst way to dodge. I want this man to convince me because I think that's a bit of a stretch when you say it's the worst, but hey. People don't engage with because the game really doesn't do a good job at explaining them. But okay, trust let's me, hear it. using just one of these can make your journey so much more enjoyable and way less painful. Yeah, but I also want to learn. Rolling is bad. We yeah, learned that jumping is that's the first thing that I heard. Years ago when Zali made a video on it. So recently, my curiosity got the best of me, making me test every single attack in the game. <laughs> my god. To see which ones can be jumped over, and as cliche as it might sound, you won't believe some of these. Okay, hand. But why would you want to jump yeah. instead of rolling anyways? Yeah. Rolling has immunity frames and jumping doesn't, after all. Let's take Tree Sentinel as an example. Most of us have mm -hmm. fought Tree Sentinel and felt like the second phase attacks are just a little unfair. He jumps and slams into the ground, which creates a shockwave, so you need to dodge two hitboxes in total if you want to roll into it up close. You need to roll late enough to iframe the shield and- Uh, well, there's only- you can only roll once, though. Like, it's not like you can roll, like, twice in order to dodge that. Like, actually, it's impossible to do that in a roll like that. But you only need to dodge once. And it's it's one of those things, jump good. Roll good. <laughs> and still but have iframes left for the shockwave, which is brutal. You don't have that many iframes. But if you jump, you don't get hit. Even better, it but gives you the opportunity yeah. for the fan favorite jumping heavy attack, which does a ton of health damage and stun yeah. damage. What I'm actually getting at is that it's not that roll is the worst mechanic or anything. It's more that you can use both. Like you can jump, you can roll, and then there's a... Uh, crouch i will never use crouch to dodge but just because my thought process is not going to be able to click on the freaking crouch mechanic but hey thing also consumes less stamina than rolling when you jump your lower body Bro, becomes that... immune to damage that includes the legs and even part of the stomach but not the hands hanging off to the side the immunity starts pretty much immediately even when you're still visually on the ground and lasts 60 frames which is a whole second compared to 26 frames on a roll it starts faster, it lasts longer, which means you've got to go way too early uh, or extremely late and dodge. still get away with it. There are a ton of attacks that you can jump over. Some are useful than others, but the yeah. rule of thumb is that That's if you attack it's slow to the ground, you can probably jump over it. Not every attack is worth it though, so here are some examples of actually useful examples. Pretty much every AoE, which includes Radagon, Godric, yeah. Radan, yeah. Malekith, Godfrey. Well, that one I didn't know. That yes, yes. Sex. That no. I never fought that boss in my life. Dragon pin. That makes dog. no sense. What the hell? That that made no sense. How can you do how can you jump a thunderbolt coming from the sky or from the ground up? But it's still a thunder. There's still thunder. Dragon pin. How does that work? Watchdog and Tree Sentinel. Yeah. You can yeah. use a really cool dodge on Margaret where you jump over his hammer when he goes into phase two. That one is actually crazy. What? The AOE. A majority of Godric's attacks can be jumped. Shocker there. Oh, wow. You can jump that? That one is BS. How can you jump? You can jump over That's ridiculous. And yeah, that one, yes. Thrust attacks, although those are really hard to do. You can dodge Millennia's grab and thrust attack by jumping to the side. I'm not trying Margit to test Millennia's both sets. Really I'm not going to do that. Godskin Noble's ground slam is usually very annoying to time, but can easily be jumped. Great yeah, Red that one, yes. Some very flashy jumps because of how weird his hitboxes are. Red Wolf's second yeah. swing and spin attacks can be jumped, which is... Oh, cool. that's the actually good dodge. for me to know, just because that wolf, for some reason, is the worst freaking boss fight that I've ever had. It pissed me more fighting this wolf than Melania or any other boss in this entire game. I literally pop a, a blood vessel fighting that thing. <laughs> uh, it was so aggressive. The first time I'm playing like a hard game, that wolf was too aggressive. Just, My just God. too fun to not do yeah like majority of the jumps that he's doing i Trust did it myself so that yeah that is actually quite fair but there's some jumps that i really didn't know that one yes one. i did yeah that there one as two well attacks that can be jumped on black knives that one as well and there yeah. are a lot of attacks you can jump away from rather than over like these 
Like, I'm not gonna lie. Keep an eye out for I have never tried that. Over the DLC. The previews made it seem like jumping will be a big part as well. And pro tip, if you jump in quick succession, the follow-up jumps will be tiny little baby jumps. <laughs> but if you guard while jumping, you can prevent that from happening. Trust me, nothing feels as good as guard jumping up a slope. You are so fast. Strafing mm. is another alternative to rolling that you should always consider. If an enemy does a slow overhead or a thrusting attack, you can usually sprint or walk to the side and avoid it, which consumes next to no stamina and doesn't yeah. lock you in any sort of animation, meaning you have a larger window to punish. It also looks badass. I mean, look at this, dude. The only problem is that some of the best strafes require being locked off instead of looking at the boss. Locking on in general yeah. is a clever little trap FromSoft baits everyone into using cam That's trials. a creepy boss. When you are locked on, you can only move based on the boss's position. Holding left while locked on will make you walk circles around the boss. And I'm questioning off, why is this horseman hasn't you even see moved how yet. That limits your movement? This is why locking off is genuinely a chat move. In some cases, it even breaks bosses completely. And in Sekiro, locking off and attacking with the tip of your blade how does that, work? So that enemies couldn't parry you, which kind of defeats the purpose of the whole okay, game. What the I heck is that, bro? <laughs> since it's pretty advanced, but there are some easy attacks anyone can use it on, like Melania's flower attack. Just lock off, walk around her, take a little jog, and she will miss you, which... My god, <laughs> it looks so stupid. Uh? If there's one thing you can take away from this, is that you shouldn't be locked on if a boss is above you. It, it's just going to give you a headache and even limit you from going right under the boss. Which one of these do you think oh. will do more damage? An unupgraded holy mace or a plus 13 broadsword? This is obviously just an extreme example, but knowing the enemy's weaknesses can easily add a little bit of extra damage Whoa, wait, is he talking about, okay, advantages and disadvantages? But yes, a holy weapon would do wonders. So I would always suggest basically using a weapon that is basically uh, stronger against that element. So undead folks have literally every holy damage is basically good on un undead ones. Now, I don't know what is basically uh, the type advantage for every other creature. I just know the holy damage is stronger against undead. Every Everything else, I really don't know damage which adds up quickly in the case of those who live in death aka yeah. the undead enemies an unupgraded mace with sacred blade is literally all you need for the entire game combined it with the last right and you can't even tell the mace has not been upgraded once bonus points yeah. for sacred because it makes it so that it's ridiculously skeleton powerful but i, I don't know any other creatures uh upgraded weakness as high as possible but don't stress it i mean plus 10 is probably more than enough but you can also get it higher obviously and bring golden epitaph for anything undead you really won't regret it a rule of thumb is that when fighting flesh, you want to use slash and fire. When fighting light armor, you want to use piercing and lightning. And when fighting heavy armor, you want to use blunt and, well, lightning. You can't go wrong with the lightning. Anything dead mm. or spectral is weak to holy. Basically, okay. nothing is weak to magic, other than maybe imps. And all of the status effects are obviously really good. For the worst case scenarios like Elden Beast, where there really is no weakness at all, just <laughs> use God Slayer Flame. It deals percentage damage, so even a plus zero dagger can do thousands of damage to NG plus Elden Beast. Pretty cool. But not just elemental damage matters. Special hmm. weaknesses are just as important. So here are some examples. Fasten your seatbelts, boys. You are about to be mind blown. Death birds are extremely vulnerable to holocaust. Watchdogs... That's not real, right? That can't be real. You cannot just one shot that guy and just bypass Always that like nothing happened. Death birds are extreme. How? Also, what the hell is that stamina bar? But seriously, how are you one shotting this man? What? What did you use? To holy pass. Watchdogs go mad if hit by enough crystal darts, which can make the double watchdog fight a walk in the park. You can bait this Wait, combo what? and jump over the third swing every time, or parry it, for an easy kill. Big flowers start wailing when hit with fire and can be slapped pretty easily. Birds fall over when hit with gravity spells. Land octopus can have their arms cut off one by one to make them squirm harmlessly. Well, that part, I think everybody knows that one. Land squirts explode when hit with poison. Trolls stun if shot in the face and start covering the face afterwards. Flame cherry. That okay, that one awesome. I think everybody knows you that one. Sekiro style from above. Everyone knows that healing spells kill revenants. Pumpkin yeah, heads can be put to sleep to avoid having to deal with the helmet mechanic altogether. 
And you that one I didn't know. The fist attack, but not the weapon attacks. I have no idea why, but it feels what? really cool to do. These guys are weak to lightning in a very weird way, where they will always stagger after five hits of lightning, no matter the source. Glintstone blades kill the invisible scarabs for you. Giant lobsters Whoa. are also weak to sleep. Finger creepers become incapacitated by fire. Barricade yeah, shield one makes that. the misbegotten look very pathetic. <laughs> And it's honestly a really good Ash of War in general for wow. anything if you got That one. easy. Falling but to be fair, that boss is super easy out of the way. Extra damage from gravity weapons and equipment. How are you like weak to gravity really when your ability is all gravity? What I the? I've even forgotten some. It goes for that guy has more buffs than Jesus really himself. Really hard for imps and birds in early game. I might have even... Okay, did you mod the game? Like, what is all of this? i forgotten some. It goes without saying that the same applies to you, though. Who do you think is tankier, Armor Boy or Naked Man? Let's imagine that Godric is Mesmer for a second. I know this is very insulting to Mesmer, but whatever. Without any equipment, his fire breath hits pretty hard. With one of the best armor sets in the game, it doesn't do nearly as much. But in comparison to wearing no armor and using the right buffs, it's it's insane. It basically just tickles me. And all I used was flame-resistant talismans and a flame liver. I can still light roll. Mesmer will do a lot of fire damage, just saying. Generally, I would always have two yeah, different talismans. I noticed that when I was fighting much freaking always useful him. Because there's a lot of physical damage in the entire game. And the second slot is whatever element you are. That's the funny part. Like, I was trying to see, okay, let me use... Should I use physical negation or fire negation? Because I only, I can only use once. Well, I have the slots enough to use both of them. But I was like, but now that I have his weapon, now I can see that it's more proficient with fire than actual physical attacks. So fire would be the best one if you're just trying to use one talisman. I only wanted to use one talisman. Plus, I also don't have the vastly boost fire negation. I had the downgrade version, which is greatly boosted. But this one is actually um, pretty nice. I just happened to just throw hands at that guy, because and that was it. At 60 Vigo, I recommend the Crimson Sea Talisman, but that's mostly personal preference. And the fourth Wait. slot is for damage. Trust me when I say, after seeing the previously personal preference. Boost uh, HP restoration from flasks. Oh. Okay, so when you have a lot of... Okay, yeah, yeah. because I attempt to use multiple flasks just to heal one set of hp yes and the fourth slot is this i don't have i need this where can i get it greatly raises attack power with six su with successive attacks uh, so consecutive attacks what i mean damage. trust me when i say after sequel okay. that's mostly personal preference and the fourth slot is for damage trust me when i say after seeing mm -hmm. the previous stuff that this is how is he boosting himself like this okay so uh, my question is how long does these buffs even last because this is ridiculous. This is not over preparing. <laughs> it's hard. Stealth is criminally underrated. I made a whole video on it, but to summarize the most important message, use Assassin's Gambit. This Ash of War is beyond broken. You give up a tiny bit of health for a 30 second buff that entirely mutes your footsteps and makes you nearly invisible. So I'm sorry, what? Now, I use stealth every single time like in in this dlc i think it's the most used mechanic that i have actually been using probably even more than roll but i've been stealthing the entire game because these guys are one-shotting me okay so might as well just stealth all the way but this ability i i think i should actually be using this one it's actually quite useful but yeah but probably you guys will not see stealthing a lot on my playthrough just because i normally get to the bosses right at the end or like at the beginning normally of the video so you guys will not see that but on my normal gameplay just trying to figure it out the spots and everything i already i just basically stealth Similar that's to it social anxiety not only can you skip groups of enemies if they're too tough or start a fight with a heavy attack to the back of someone's head, also similar Damn. to social anxiety, but you can also straight up cheese some bosses and make them look like they're from Dark Souls 2. For example, if you use it before going into the Crucible Duo Arena and quickly throw a sleep pot high to the back right, then crouch sprint along the left wall, you can fight one of them at a time. I know this is kind of complicated, but it's absolutely what? worth it. Or for Godskin Duo, just use it before reaching the middle of the arena and then walk forward to toss two sleeping pots between them. Just look at these idiots. It's also nice to sneak behind <laughs> this dickhead for two charged heavy attacks before the fight even starts. Or, my favorite, it's possible to cheese Ofni by following the setup one for one. He deserves it, please do it. Why does he deserve it?
Why does he deserve it though? And all you have to do is Volcano Mana's first hunting quest and then Banal will sell the Asher for. Get it as early as possible and put it on Arabia. Or if he's dead, just go to his salt and Volcano Manor. I bet you didn't know that because that guy. Crafting is I didn't know he was so actually there. And people are missing out on it. Every consumable has a distinct use. Pots can yes. do some crazy damage and offer a tony. Pots are actually amazing. I just don't use them. Waterfall or cheesing her second phase. You can throw around status effects and finish enemies or bosses from a safe distance. The bubble perfumes are extremely strong, allowing you to survive any attack, no matter how strong or how much damage it deals. Up to ten times the fight. The spark aromatic does. Act now that sentence is beyond ridiculous what did you just say excellent damage oh low stats and the poison one procs the strongest version of poison in the entire game throwing knives can be used to bait out a single enemy at a time or in combination with assassin's gambit to bait enemies away from somewhere or near a cliff but they can also be used to ping the <laughs> enemies or bosses every so often and reset the posture bar to keep it from going back up and I think the there was a gameplay that I did that I was only using those freaking things to fight. I didn't use for hundreds of did I finish the game with that? No, <laughs> but I did so try it. If you can use torrent on a boss fight, then do it. Chances are the fight is designed around it. As much Bro, as I like that damage. One -on -ones on the ground, but to be fair, this is a game plus. Just as fun. Really, the lesson to learn from me being hesitant to use some of these mechanics for hundreds of hours is to just use everything. Even spirit ashes if you feel like it. Just have fun. There's oh yeah, shame use everything. Like I'm using of war, Ash of Wars, and not Ash of Wars. What am I talking about? For the DLC. Uh, Vow of the Indomitable gives you a whole second of complete invulnerability and can be used for attacks like Godfrey's Shockwave or Riker's Earthquake. And with good enough timing, you can even negate Waterfall. Stormblade is one of the best Ashes of War. What? Early that exists in the game? Phalanxes do incredible posture damage and can be used without even attacking to stagger dragon and free casts and then do actual damage. And yeah, I tried to use that on really some of the bosses, the but Ashes I couldn't. Of War are also really good for hitting dragon heads. Damn. All of the mechanics I talked about in this game combined allow you to do something like this. If you understand everything I'm doing here, then you're ready for the DLC. Lastly, and this might be a tiny bit of spoilers, but not really, okay. make sure to explore first if the DLC is giving you a lot of trouble, or probably in general, even if it isn't. Find blessings and increase your defenses to significantly help with the ridiculous amount of damage everything will deal. Yeah. And bring a lantern. It's dark in the shadows. A lantern? Sorcery versus incantations. Which ones is better? Uh -huh. Um, I couldn't tell you, but I will basically switch to incantations now because I was using spells, but then I realized Mesma does not give a damn about spells and I didn't even try, but I may actually make a playthrough with just using consumables. Do you guys want to see that?